I really like position, velocity, acceleration problems, and so this is a summary to help you with free response questions based upon those. It could help you with multiple choice test questions as well on the AP Calculus test. Um, this, we're given that S of 0, position at 0 is 8. This graph is the velocity, okay, this is V of t, okay, the graph is a velocity, all right. Now if I want to find S of z 7, but the graph has velocity, and it's all we're given, and we're given the initial position. Well, if I want to actually find the position, well, if I integrate velocity, doesn't that get you down to position? So if I want to find S of 7, the basic idea is you want to start at 8, in the initial position. So when you start at S sub 0, and you want to add the change from 0 to 8 of velocity. So I'm going to take the initial position and add it from 0 to 8. Actually, it's not to 8, it's to 7. My mistake, because we're going to 7. 8 would be to the end. So we're going from 0 to 7. Now, to do that, to solve this, again, you have your initial position is 8, and you're going to sum up the change of velocity on this interval. Again, when you sum up the change of velocity, you get how much your position has changed. Because the integral of velocity of position, so this would sum up the change in velocity gives you how much change in position. So if we start at this value, sum up the change in position, you got it. So for this value, S sub 0 is 8. Plus the area from 0 to 7, well the area of this right here, this is 3 and 3 high, 3 times 3 divided by 2 is 4.5, positive. This is 4, this is 3, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 divided by 2 is 6, but it's negative because it's below the x-axis. So if I want the area from 0 to 7, oh, wouldn't that be simply 4.5 plus negative 6? So wouldn't that be, look like, let's see, this is negative 1.5, so it'd be 8 minus 1.5, oh, that would be Looks like 6.5. So your position at time 7 seconds is 6.5, as long as you start at 8 and you add up the change given by the velocity. Now if I want velocity at 2, hopefully that's pretty simple, because the if this is a velocity graph, the velocity at 2 is simply 1. And if you want to put it as t meters, per second. Might be good for units. This would be meters. According to the increments, you meters per second, seconds, meters, and so forth. So it would be meters per second. Okay, that one is easy. Haha, <laughs> yes. If I want my acceleration, we have to realize acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So acceleration is going to be the derivative of velocity at 2. Derivative means slope. So what's the slope at 2? Or look at 2. What's the slope here? So I'm going to go, oh, what is the slope? Well, just it, the slope at this point, what's the slope of this line right here at 2? Well, down 1 over 1. Isn't that negative 1? And that would be meters per second squared if you want units. Okay, This would be meters per second, meters per second squared, meters. You, with, with, um, the units are very important on position, velocity, acceleration problems because the units can tell you quite a bit and sometimes they'll ask for units, so be careful. And the reason it's in me meters per second squared is that acceleration always seconds squared, but um, when you take a derivative of meters, you put a seconds, it's per second. When you drive this, it's per seconds again, so it's per second squared. Anyways, um, now, that's your first three things. Next thing else, what's total distance traveled? Well, this right here is the change in position. So the total distance traveled is a little bit different. The total distance traveled, well, if you think of this, oh, uh, that negative 6 was loss of position. But what if, hmm, the change of the total distance traveled, what you have to memorize is it's the integral from 0 to 8 of velocity, but instead of just velocity, what you have to realize it's going to be the absolute value of velocity. Because what happens is, this graph right here at the bottom, I actually got to make it go up here. 
I actually got to make the absolute value of it and bring this whole graph up. So now what was a negative 6 loss is actually a positive 6 gain. So anything that was a negative gain, I got to make a positive because I got to add up total change. Because this is negative change, which in this part, it's subtracted. But I want to change anything that would have been subtracted into a sum. So this absolute value basically flips anything that was underneath over. And then if I add up all these, um, I haven't done this one yet. The area of this one is 1 by 4, so that'd be 2. So basically, the area of the absolute value of this is going to be oh, 4.5 plus positive 6, because it's not negative anymore. It's up here, positive. That's what absolute value does, plus 2. Well, that looks like it would be hmm, 12.5 meters. That is the total distance traveled. That is my position at time 7. This is my total distance traveled over the whole interval. What would be the total distance at 7? Well, it would be 10.5. You add these two, but you have to make that positive. So there's a difference between total distance traveled and position. Keep that, be aware of that. Now, the next one, speed. Speed is very important. Speed is velocity, but you don't care about direction. When I have velocity with negatives and positives, I care about negative positives and which direction the velocity is going. With speed, if I'm driving a car, I don't care what direction I'm going. And actually, you do when you're driving. But um, the negative positive doesn't make a difference with speed. So the definition of speed is the absolute value of velocity. It kind of looks like it there, but that's speed. Now, my question is then, what would be my speed at time 5? Well, if I'm thinking, okay, my function is now absolute value of velocity. So at 5, wasn't my velocity negative 2? But now, hey, look right there. Isn't this my speed? Isn't my absolute value this red part? Anything that was upside down gets flipped over. So isn't my speed at time 5 actually going to be positive 2? So my speed is actually positive 2. And this would be meters per second. Speed is meters per second because it's a velocity. And it's positive 2 because it would have been negative 2, but you do the absolute value of it, it makes it positive 2. All right. Now, another thing is, how do you find average of something? Average velocity, average. Well, if I'm seeing average speed, well, average is always going to be 1 over b minus a. And in this situation, the interval is 8. So it's 1 over 8. I integrate from 0 to 8. And I do my speed. Well, speed is the absolute value of velocity. dt. OK, that would be my average speed formula. You average basically your speed. Now, what would be the what would be this value? And then we're going to divide by 8. Well, it's basically the total distance traveled was this, right? Isn't this just done right there? <laughs> this is actually the total distance traveled. Oh, that's cool. I did the work already. That's cool. See this right there? Cool. So that's 12.5. And then just don't you divide by 8? And the average speed would be that meters per second. And if you had a calculator or you wanted to take the time, you could find the final answer. But that would be your average speed. Okay. Now, average velocity would be different. You would have no absolute value here. And pay attention to that as well. Okay, let's go do some more in depth questions. These are a little bit more tricky, so let's think about it. What is the, when is the speed decreasing? So speed is the absolute value of velocity. So when is the speed decreasing? So when I think of speed decreasing, decreasing means derive speed and negative. So I'm going to derive speed, which is this. I'm going to derive the absolute value of velocity. And I want to know when that is what? Less than 0. I want to know when it's negative. Now, if I want the, if I want the velocity decreasing, it's different. It would just be the derivative of velocity. Now, what a lot of times people mess up with this is they'll just go, oh, they'll write it as this. And, and it's not this, but people do it all the time. They go like this. They think that is the derivative of speed. That is not the case. This is a no-no. You can't do that. You have to write it like this. You're deriving speed. So let's just look at this graph. When is the velocity, I mean, the speed, less than 0? OK. Now, 
one, the, sorry, the derivative of speed less than zero. So basically it's saying, when is the slope of this graph negative? So where is the slope of this graph? Thinking the red now, we're not considering this because speed has a red line. Where is this graph on top slope negative? And what you'll notice is, oh, the slope's negative from zero to there. So it's negative from zero to three. And it's also negative right here. Looks like from four to seven. Okay, because we're looking at the derivative of the speed, the slope of the speed, negative. So the slope's negative there and the slope's negative there. Here's where the speed is increasing. All right, next. When does it travel to the left? Travel to the left, what does that mean? When I say travel to the left, you need to think of velocity. And my velocity is negative when it's traveling to the left. So. I want my velocity negative. So let's go back to our original function, ignore the red. Where is my velocity negative? That would mean it's traveling to the left. And hopefully you notice it's negative on the interval three to seven. Those are all negative values. So it's traveling to the left on the interval three to seven. That's not coordinate three, seven. Okay, so if it's traveling to the right would be from here and here. It's traveling to the right. Now, where does it change directions? Now, to change directions, doesn't that mean that if you're changing directions, don't you have to stop? So basically, if you're changing directions, aren't you trying to find out where v of t equals zero? In order to change direction, you have to realize you have to stop. So where do we change direction? Where is your v of t zero? Oh, to change directions right there and there. So at t equals 3 and 7. That's where you change directions. And that's also kind of why on the interval you're going left. It kind of, those correlate quite a bit. OK, next. <clears throat> where, when is it farthest to the right? So if I'm going farthest to the right, that means the maximum. Because if I'm thinking I go left, right, left, right, isn't the right side max and the left side min? If I say farthest to the left, that would be absolute min. Far as the right is absolute max. So what I'm looking for here is the absolute max. So if I'm looking for the absolute max, um, there are different ways of doing this. You can do summing and try to figure it out. But I have this little cool shortcut way to kind of figure this out. Let's think about this. If I want my farthest to the right, let's think about right here. If we start right here, the area under the curve is 4.5. What that means is I went to the right. 4.5. My area here is negative 6. That means I all of a sudden turned around and went this way, negative 6. All right? And then my area is all of a sudden 2. So that means I turned around and went this way, positive 2. So looking at this, if I went this way, positive 4.5, then I went this way, negative 6, and I went this way, positive 2, do you notice how this would actually be your farthest to the right? And where is this on your graph? Well, isn't it right there? Isn't that this point farthest to the right? And we turn around, went back a whole lot, and come back. I didn't get far enough back. So that right there would be right there, and that would be t equals 3. That's a cool way. Draw a little graph. The area in the curves went this way, then this way, and this way. It's a way to tell absolute max. Your absolute min would be right here. That would be your absolute min. Technically, with absolute max and mins, you want to check endpoints and relative maxes and mins and stuff. But this is a little bit easier way of doing it. So hopefully you kind of like that shortcut. Lastly, when is it the fastest? Now, this can be a little confusing to think of fastest. Hmm. Fastest, fastest. Now, do I care about direction? No. Because if I think fastest, isn't that the maximum speed, not maximum velocity? So I actually want the maximum speed. All right, I want the max speed. So if I want to find where does this have the maximum speed? So if this is my speed function, I'm including the red instead of this down here. Looking at this, where's the maximum value of this velocity function? Which absolute value means this. So looking at this graph, where's my highest point? Maximum speed is my highest point. Well, we look right here, okay, that looks like the highest point so far, but isn't that the highest? Again, you have to consider this, because we're talking about speed, not velocity, so we don't care about, this gets flipped over. 
but my maximum speed is right there. So at t equals 8 is my maximum speed. Fastest, again, is your maximum and speed because we don't care about direction. Because you could be going in the negative direction the fastest. So a negative, say, let's say this was here was all the way down here. This went all the way down here, then that would be the maximum because when you brought it up, it'd be really high and that'd be the highest. Because a negative velocity can still be the maximum speed. Anyways, hopefully this all helped. Hopefully you're getting the idea of position to velocity to acceleration and all these key ideas within it.